First thing we'll do is talk about the effect of concentration. And before we do that, um, how does concentration affect rate? Um, well, so what, how did we uh, figure it out in kinetics here? Yeah, so depending on the rate order, you got a first order reactants, second order reactants, or zero order reactants. So for zero order reactants, uh, they wouldn't affect rate. The concentration change wouldn't affect rate. So primarily, we're only going to talk about first or second order reactants and how they would affect equilibrium. Okay, um, and we already know that even in our equilibrium system, we're not going to include those for zero order. Reactants in our equilibrium constant expression. Remember, if you saw a solid or a liquid water, you're not even going to put that in the K, right? Because they're not going to affect equilibrium. So we're not even going to worry about those. So uh, the concentration uh, is either first order or second order, that tells you. But for both of them, if you add more reactants for a first or second order reactant, what's going to happen to the rate? It's going to go up or going to go down? First or second order. Add some more reactant. What happens? It goes up, okay? It's either going to go up linearly or with the square that change. But in both cases, it goes up. So increasing the concentration is going to increase the rate, all right? So now, if you've got an equilibrium system, you've got two rates, or basically two reactants, reactants of the forward and reactants of the reverse. You just got to ask yourself, what's being disturbed? Which concentration? So... Let's look at this system. We got N2O4 is in equilibrium with NO2. That's our equilibrium system. <coughs> Should we consider it? No, we're good? Okay. Yes, it will affect the rates. That's what we're talking about. So we're asking, how does concentration affect the rate? And so for first or second order, that's what we'll talk, use. Increasing the concentration is going to increase the rate. Um, and then, of course, we're also going to have to talk about decreasing concentration, how that's going to impact the equilibrium system, too. All right, so we've got our equilibrium system. N2O4 is in equilibrium with NO2, even though we haven't considered it. It's still there. Okay. Um, what would happen if I, let's say, first, let's increase the concentration of N2O4. Which rate is that going to impact? The forward or the reverse? The forward rate, yep. And we just talked about how increasing that concentration is going to do what to the rate? Increase it. So it's going to increase the rate of the forward reaction. Right? It's not really going to mess with the reverse rate. So increasing the concentration of N2O4 increases the rate of the forward reaction. And we'll just say rate sub F, so for rate of the forward reaction. All right, so when we have a disturbance and suddenly one of the rates is bigger... That's what we mean, we're going to start saying that is going to shift that way. So if the, increase, if the rate of the forward reaction is bigger, so this uh, rate is bigger than this rate, so now it's bigger. I draw it bigger. It's, uh, we say the rate of the forward reaction is bigger, so we say that shifts to the right. And I can, I can spell that. <coughs> so if the forward rate is bigger, um, that means the rate of the forward reaction is bigger, and we're saying that shifts right. That's what we just said. So now we need to think about what would happen to the concentration of NO2 in that situation. If I'm going, if shifting right, I'm going this way, 
more N2O4 is reacting to make NO2. So what would happen to this concentration? I'm hearing about 50-50. The what? It's okay. It goes to the right, so it's actually going to make more NO2. If the rate of the forward reaction is higher, we're going to make more of the product, more NO2. So its concentration is going to go up if we're shifting to the right. So if you increase the concentration of a reactant, that shifts the equilibrium to the right, and you're going to make more product. Okay? So you can talk about this in terms of Le Chatelier's principle. Okay? The equilibrium system, uh, system is going to shift to minimize the disturbance. Okay, so what's my disturbance? I have more N204. I just added some N204. How do we minimize that? Let's use it up. Let's use it up. And if we're using it up, what's that going to do? It's going to make more product. Okay, so NO2 goes up. So that's how you can uh, apply the logic of Le Chatelier's principle. <coughs> All right, so we can increase concentration of the reactants. We can also increase the concentration of the products. So we can increase the concentration of NO2. So we're back at equilibrium, and now we just threw in some more NO2. Which rate is that going to affect, and how? So is it going to affect the reverse or the forward? The reverse. Is that going to make it go up or go to down? So we got more NO2 bumping into each other. That's going to make them react faster? If they bump into each other more often. So yeah, that means the reverse rate is going to increase. So we'll just say the rate sub R for the reverse reaction. All right, so in equilibrium speak, if the reverse reaction is higher now, the rate of the reverse reaction is higher, we say that shifts to the left. Shifts left. So any any time the reverse rate is bigger, we say it shifts to the left. Uh, just to summarize, so we increase the concentration of NO2, that increases the rate of the reverse. We call that shifting to the left. Okay, it shifts left. That will cause N2O4 to go up. What else can we do to the concentration? We can increase it and we can decrease it. So we also have to talk about that. What would happen if we just raise my equilibrium arrows? I didn't want to do that. What would happen if we decrease the concentration of N2O4? All right. So I decrease the concentration of N2O4. Which rate is that going to affect? Is that going to affect the reverse or the forward? The forward. What's going to happen to the forward rate? It's going to go down. Yeah. So the forward rate goes down. So the rate sub F, the forward rate goes down. So suddenly I'm smaller. Now, if the rate of the forward reaction went down, which rate is bigger? The reverse is bigger. Nothing happened to the reverse, but just by the rate of the forward reaction going down, that means the reverse is bigger. So that just causes the rate of the reverse to be bigger. If the rate of the reverse is bigger, what do you think we'd call that? Do we, would we call that shift to the left or shift to the right? Shift to the left. If the reverse is bigger, we say that shifts left.
what's going to happen to my concentration of NO2 if I'm shifting to the left? It does, it decreases. If I'm going this way, if I'm going left, that means this is going to go down. The last shaft delay principle helps out a lot with uh, decreasing concentrations, I think. Okay? So what's my disturbance? I just lost some N2O4. Okay? Somebody took my N2O4. I'll find out who. But until then, how do I minimize that disturbance? Let's make some more of it. That's how we're going to minimize it. So if I'm making more of it, I'm using up NO2. All right, so we got one more scenario and not a lot of room. I'm worried. All right, so we're back at equilibrium. Okay, we increase concentration of N2O4, we increase concentration of NO2, we decrease concentration of N2O4. What's our last thing to do? Decrease NO2. Decrease NO2. Okay. So if I decrease the concentration of NO2, which rate does that affect? So the forward or reverse? Reverse. reverse. Is the reverse going to go up or going to go down? Down. Down. So now suddenly my rate of the reverse is smaller. Rate so the reverse is smaller than the rate of my forward. That's how I should write it. So if the rate of the forward is larger, which way do we say that? Shifts left or shifts right? Shifts right. Now, what do you think is going to happen to my concentration of N2O4? Okay, if I'm shifting to the right, that means this is bigger than this. What's going to happen to my concentration of N2O4? It's going to decrease. And so let's think about this in terms of minimizing the disturbance. What's my disturbance? I lost some NO2. How do I make how do I minimize that? Let's make some more. Okay, so let's shift to the right to make more. And if I'm gonna make more NO2 to minimize that disturbance, I'm gonna lose some N2O4. It's gonna decrease. And if you don't believe me. Here's a cartoon drawing to back me up, okay? So it, when we do this, this was our second one. We added NO2, okay? We threw in some more NO2. The equilibrium shifts to the left is the, if this goes up to make more N2O4. Basically use up the NO2 that was added to minimize the disturbance. <coughs> It's always nice to have cartoon drawings back you up. 